kind of what are we having today yeah today apparently you are gonna give me some time to to right to introduce the the words yes yeah. or not that, that's yeah. us that's okay us. yeah that's we'll yeah. skip that we'll skip that <laughs> okay yeah. order of the day order of the day today uh, of course first the tea boards because yeah. we uh, we couldn't get them squeezed in mm -hmm. the last time and we have a surprise for yes us. of yeah. course we have we have a surprise for someone we have a surprise we are uh, answering questions we are talking about soldering hot air soldering uh, especially and we have questions from uh, readers and attendees mm -hmm. and <coughs> we have uh, answers i hope mm. Uh, then we'll be doing a, a giveaway at the end of the session. We'll be doing a giveaway to all of our, uh, or to one of our uh, attendees, mm -hmm. to uh, get a USB serial hub. We'll be explaining it shortly. But uh, one of you attendees will get a USB serial hub. Mm. So, but uh, first, um, uh, it's your time. Yeah. Okay. That means you're uh, you're on for the T-board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, go with them. Okay. And there we are. Yeah, well, as uh, most of you know, we released a pack with uh, three T boards. And the thing is that we were thinking, okay, of course, you can see the t shirt I'm wearing right now. That nice. Former time, yeah. It's not the same as yours. No, it's not. It's, the same. My, it's my own, this one. But yours is bigger. Uh, no, <laughs> don't try it, no. <laughs> so, okay, now, first of all, do, now tell me they don't look nice. Of course, they look nice. And actually, I brought the three of them with me. I don't know if my cameraman can uh, zoom in. But the T-boards are basically a, a nice platform to jump from a microcontroller uh, platforms such as Arduino, for instance. Yeah. You know, uh, and get to use a microcontroller alone and build your own circuits. You know. So yeah. the thing is that how to get rid of these big boards like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or a, Bla a BeagleBone Black. And don't have to buy, you know, one of these boards every time you need to to make a new project. Yeah, because that's the downside when you uh, when you uh, use an Arduino or a BeagleBone is even bigger. Yeah, they're very nice products, but sometimes you only need uh, a small microcontroller, uh, uh, DIP8 or something, yeah. and then you push your program in and it uh, it's just steering a few LEDs or yeah, um, exactly. Uh, while while using a bomb. bigger microcontroller, yeah. which is massive. So for that reason, you would go with something like this which is an 8-pin microcontroller, uh, they all add mail stuff. And actually the bigger uh, T-board, <coughs> uh, it has uh, this, you know, uh, extremely famous uh, 80 mega, the same as yep. you may find in the Arduino Uno, the 328, so it's actually... And well, we were thinking, no one better to explain this than the inventor, which is Andrew, which is with us right here. Uh, yes, he is attending. Yeah, so he, he's attending. Welcome, Andrew. And we will uh, first introduce because Andy, uh, he is, um, he's uh, handling CrashBank.com and he has some really cool projects. So he, he's the, the actual inventor of the of the of the T-board. The the and on our side in uh, our Electro Lab is uh, Luke Lemons, who is uh, coordinating the project mm -hmm. and um, discussing with Andy about how it's going to to be and. Yeah. What, what so, are we going to do with that? Yeah, actually they will be replying that, uh, you know, privately yeah, so if necessary. So attendees, if you have questions, please uh, put your questions yes. in the Q&A yeah. box. And uh, both uh, Andrew uh, as Luke will be uh, uh, answering them if we uh, cannot answer them. Yeah, if they are, you know, mainstream, we will sell, yeah. sell them live. So, so well, uh, I'm giving. I mean, I'm leaving the schematics here, okay, of the yeah. of the bigger version, and I'm gonna pass the ball to Andrew, so Andrew can explain the reasons that uh, he he decided to come up with such solution. Okay, man, it's your deal. So explain the reasons you decided to come up with such nice solution because it's actually really smart, and no one before thought about thought about this. So. Great, thanks very much. Um, hello everyone and thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, the T-boards were, were a little project I came up with a while ago and, and uh, I'm really excited to see how, how Electro have, came on, have come on board and, uh, and helped to give the, the project a little bit more, a little bit more legs. So, so where is it from? Um, I think to go into that I need to tell you a bit about where I'm from because, because I designed the board initially for myself and, and I think that we ended up realizing 
that that the board worked for a lot more people than just me. So I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, I'm a, a software developer. I'm one of those people who's moved moved over from the horrible world of software into playing with hardware. I discovered that my software could make could make things move. So I built a robot, and I was really excited that that I could write a line of code, and that code could make something shoot across the floor. Um, and and then I slowly slowly became more and more of an enthusiast, um, and I started wanting to move away from um, from the Arduino. And eventually, um, eventually, I, I found out that each time I started a new project, a quick prototype um, was actually a very slow prototype. Uh -huh. So you you have to rebuild that whole breadboard again. Um, and from there, really came 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 the T-board. Um, I looked at some of the other bread other breadboard friendly mod modules that were out there. Uh -huh. I didn't have the thing that I wanted. Um, but when flexible enough, um, often they'd only have a little a little micro USB connector. Um, so so I started out on the on the breadboard, went through a few few iterations of the of the prototype. Um, I did some you know, got some ideas from Luke, he was he was very helpful in in fine tuning the design. Hmm. Eventually what I wanted to achieve was a module that was standalone. Uh -huh. So you you could plug the power straight into it. You didn't have to have it connected to a PC. It was quick to use, so you could. So I, I don't know if you're going to give us a, a demonstration later, um, to just to show how quickly you could plug that straight into the breadboard. Uh -huh. I find it quicker to use than an Arduino um, because there are no wires. You just plug it straight into that breadboard. And uh, and then I wanted flexibility, so. On an Arduino, you aren't able to choose the voltage that you want to operate at. You can't yep. yeah. mm -hmm. put a different crystal in. Um, the, so, so, I, so I included that flexibility, um, and then and then I wanted it to be easy to program. So put in an ISP header, um, we put in an FTDI connector for um, serial programming if you want on the keyboard 28. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as you also mentioned earlier, yeah, and um, you don't want um, to always use a, an eight mega feature eight. Sometimes you want to use eight and an eight tiny or. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's uh, also. I think I'm sorry. I'm think that that's one of the main advantages that you don't have to. Uh, if you have a board like this, a small board like this. Uh, with a dip aid on it, you can do a small program just to uh, keep some uh, LEDs flashing or uh, maybe uh, open a garage door or something. But uh, you don't need to build in a complete, um, hmm. uh, a complete uh, kit of a bigger mm -hmm. bone or uh, Arduino or whatever, because every time you need to buy a, a, a complete new yeah. Arduino or a bigger board. So this is f this is far better for me, what according to me, but. And according to the the, uh, the ones we uh, we are uh, selling, that uh, we are selling well. So uh, I think it's a good idea. I hope that more uh, readers uh, and more of our viewers uh, get to uh, get to know about yeah. it. About it. But uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Andrew, do you have a kind of um, a demonstration for us, or uh, does Jaime do that? Or I, I thought that we were going to have a demonstration in, in, with a Spanish accent today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ole. Let's go for it. Yeah. No. I'm going to. I'm going to build just really quick and then hand the next, you know, the conversation to Jan. Um, but actually, I, I, I built a circuit and I just want to show the people that you could program this on the same way as you are programming every uh, Admel. You know, in this case, yeah. I'm going to use Admel Studio. So more, you know, most people are really uh, familiar with it. So you can actually use also the Arduino IDE. I did that before, and it works perfectly. So it's not, you know, it's not a pain to to jump from from an Arduino type to this. It's actually straightforward. I had no problem at all, and you know, and you know, yeah. I'm really okay. Uh, Andrew, if it's all right with you, uh, please uh, stay tuned because you, I think mm -hmm. you're going to have loads of questions uh, to answer. <laughs> yeah. So we will be handing the questions to uh, to Andrew right now and also yeah. Luke. Uh, so man, thank you. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Thanks. I look forward to the rest of the, the webinar. Thank yeah. you. Yay. We're looking forward to see you in Munich. <laughs>
Okay, just really quick, okay? So I'm not taking so much time for this. But I just want to show, I brought with me um, with me uh, here a laptop. And I just want to show to the people that you can actually uh, program. I don't know if you can see this, but anyway. Now nah, it's just the Admin Studio and it's a small code I did. So I'm gonna burn it on the on this T-board. And then I will be building a small circuit and it's a hello world code so an LED will be blinking. So this is pretty much, uh, it has an ISP, um, ICSP uh, port so you can just connect this uh, extremely program, famous, right? yeah, the yeah. MK2. ABR MK2. Yeah. We use it a lot. Come on, everybody so has one. <laughs> almost everybody has yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, now basically I have to power the T-board then. We, I think I missed to say that the T-boards can be powered, can, can work at 5 volts or 3 volts. They have a jumper here, yeah. so, and actually this, uh, the connector for the power supply, it's, uh, you can plug up to 9 volts. But in this case I'm using 6, I think, 6, so yes. it's more than enough. So, so go for it. All green lights and stuff, and now I'm just burning the, the coal. Actually, you can find this code, okay? Yeah, we're all set. Actually, you can find this uh, the demo software in the um, in the PDF we released, and it's a free download. So anyway, okay. it's uh, it's on the T-Boards project side. Actually, on the shop also on the elector.com slash T-Boards so deal. If you, if people mm. want to download this, they can find it at our site uh, www.elector.com. Yeah, and it's a really yeah it's a really straightforward guide guide. So you don't really you know you just okay. So I built a really basic circuit um, for you to see that if uh, I'm plugging the board in the breadboard, it's not taking so much space. So actually I have a lot of space available for my own circuits. And the good point, okay, it's already there. The good point with this, uh, let's see if I don't get my cameraman crazy, is that all the components and all the peripherals and are on this side, so they actually uh, floating and they are not taking space of my breadboard because in this case it's a really small one and also all the pins of the microcontroller uh, sorry I was covering with them are on these sides so you can still uh, stick um, black components there and you still have this space here available so yeah. you know try to so do the same with a board like this yeah. It's gonna well, be you're possible. going to need a, you a need shield. shield and you're gonna need all a kind shield. of stuff. And the shield also, when mm. you use it once, you have to. Uh, um, well, it's not usable for your next uh, application. So yeah, right. With the breadboard, it's it is. The breadboard, and you just take everything yeah. out. And so for quick <laughs> prototyping, uh, prototyping, it is very uh, comes in very handy. Mm. And if your code works, yeah, then you I can always so. put it on an experimental board and uh, mm. put your normal components on it, and you have yeah. a, you can build in your complete project. Yeah, and it has a socket, so you can also uh, program your microcontroller and take it out, put another one, burn it again, Yeah, you know, take it out, put another one, so let's see if I didn't screw up. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so there's the demo, demo software, if you can even call this software. It's, it's blinking. <laughs> it's blinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it, so it's a really quick application. And but you did, you made the, the, the software this afternoon. Yeah, well, the software, you mean yeah. the four well, lines okay, of code. The, the code, okay, but that's quick prototyping. <laughs> I wouldn't call that software, <laughs> but anyway. That is quick prototyping. Yes, really quick prototyping. Yeah. <laughs> I did a prototype of a LED blink uh, device. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so, so guys, thanks a lot for this, and now we are continuing with the soldering thing, okay? Okay, so... Thank you, Jaime, for your contribution. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Um, for our attendees, uh, if you have questions about the T-board or about mm -hmm. the programming it, please uh, um, put a question in, our, in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew and Luke, uh, our colleagues, will be seeing it and will be answering these questions. So we are going to, to talk about um, uh, hot air soldering, but please pop in the questions. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, uh, Jaime. So now tell me what's all this stuff? Yeah. Anyhow. What's all this stuff? I brought a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going today, a uh, special is about uh, hot air soldering, as you can see here. I brought a lot of stuff. We'll be showing yeah. that. Uh, We're going to make some space the, here. Yeah. 
<laughs> also, a, a colleague of mine of Retronics gave me this one. Whoa. And, um, well, it's not usable anymore, but uh, it's nice, but we're not going to use this one. Uh, thank you, Jan, but we're not going to use it. <laughs> I'll put it here. Yeah, uh, hot air soldering. Well, uh, for, from our attendees, we got um, a lot of questions, and uh, we, I, we put them together, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what we, what we have. Well, for instance, what do you need? We have uh, two types, as you can see here. There's the, the hot uh, air soldering gun here, yeah. and the, uh, the SMD oven here, mm -hmm. which is actually this SMD oven on my ah. left side. You have here. A, a special kind of boards. I have I special see. boards in it. PCBs. It's, it's called mini pizzas. <laughs> we, we'll be baking them. Mini pizzas bees. Mi like mini that. pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll be baking them. <laughs> There's a special trick to bake them, so please tune, stay tuned so you can learn that. But uh, for instance, yeah, this is the hot air gun. I have the, mm -hmm. the hot air gun also here. Mm. Oh, it's on, so be careful. It's on. Yeah. It's always on, otherwise <laughs> you can't do a demonstration. <laughs> but put it there. Mm -hmm. First of all, we're going to see, well, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, of course, it's uh, solder and you need flux. And uh, we talked about flux in our previous uh, yeah. uh, webinar, mm -hmm. uh, all about it, lead, lead free, uh, solder, mm -hmm. uh, flux, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to know more about that, please go to our previous uh, yeah. webinar. Which is already uh, online. It's, on it's already online. Lector.tv, so yep. just go there. So you will need that. Mm -hmm. And uh, furthermore, you will need some tools. And I put there, I put there in the picture um, a lot of uh, tweezers mm -hmm. and um, uh, pickup tools, uh, two types. Uh, one, uh, th those two are uh, those two are hand mm -hmm. types. Yeah. But we also got uh, got here another one. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. put it here. And uh, this is the kind that um, you can get these for uh, on eBay for uh, for not so many uh, uh, euros or pounds or dollars whatever it is mm -hmm. but um, just stick it in the 230 volts mm. and then uh, how it works is you have a little you have a little pen here you, mm -hmm. there's uh, yeah, like a vacuum a sucked in, in here a vacuum needle mm -hmm. in here and then on the top side of this one on the top side there yeah, it has a small hole. It has right. a small hole. Uh -huh. So what happens here? This pump uh, does suck some air in, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing happens uh, here if you don't yeah. close this hole. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick up um, uh, uh, some of these uh, little components, just mm -hmm. put your finger on the on the hole and oh, suck it up. Now it's not uh, plugged in, so I cannot show it to you. But mm -hmm. we have two two little outlets here, <laughs> AC outlets. But this is one of the of the of the little tricks. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the one that's that's here mm -hmm. is also uh, very nice. It's just a pump. You squeeze it, yeah. and then you suck the, the ah, little. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was a, a gas can or something. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. It's so it's manual. It's, it's, manual, it's uh, just I mean. a, a yeah, rubber uh, yeah. hose yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. Squeeze it and you let it go, mm -hmm. and then it, it works. So that's yeah. for the tools. Mm -hmm. There are also some uh, some traps or do's and don'ts. And um, we see what we see here is a, a perfect connection, a drawbridge fault, and a tombstoning fault. Mm -hmm. We also talked about tombstoning in our previous yeah. webinar, so we won't. Yeah, I remember you showed there. some pictures. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I wanted to, to uh, uh, show it here because it's um, it's very. Uh, it happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. don't go into tombstoning. We have your uh, hmm. the the real uh, thing. Uh, tube stoning of uh, components and this uh, was actually this was a uh, uh, in, in one of our uh, oh. uh, our PCBs mm -hmm. so it happens to us also but please be careful if it happens like that just uh, put uh, the, the hot air gun over it and uh, heat it again mm -hmm. and just uh, take uh, take some tweezers and press the and component down and press the component uh, uh -huh. a bit down here just reheat yeah. it until it's uh, uh, until it's uh, fluid on both sides, mm -hmm. and then it's okay. So it happens; it's no big deal. Um, mm. 
we'll go on to the questions, okay. because it took a lot of my time, yeah. <laughs> of our time. And uh, the first question was from uh, Mr. Moran. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounce it right. If you're uh, uh, attending or joining us, uh, Mr. Moran, uh, please welcome. And uh, Mr. Moran wants to know how to remove an SMD component with hot air without removing other components in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and yeah, in the surroundings of the... In, in ah. the surroundings. If you, uh, uh, for instance, you have a... Oh, we have a... Uh, can we switch to, switch to that camera? Yeah, perhaps. Because we... Oh, you brought... Whoa, I see lots of capacitors there. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit crowded. Ah, yeah, I think uh, I don't know if the light is probably not nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, you probably can see that this small PCB is really highly populated. Yes, it it's is. It's like a Tokyo style PCB. So yeah. So yeah, big bulky bulky components and really yeah. all together. So all kinds of uh, of components are are sitting in the way uh, of of these components. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, it can be a pain to remove some. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, a few tricks uh, to do yeah. that. And yeah, now yeah. you can. Yep, go ahead. Well, there's um, a trick called uh, shielding. Mm -hmm. That means that if you have I brought a small piece of plate with me. And when it's on, uh, yes, we have it on, on camera, I think. Don't lose these, those no, are my components. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the middle. And mm -hmm. as you can see here, I brought a piece of uh, aluminum, just uh -huh. plain aluminum. Uh -huh. And this it, is uh, a fairly uh, big piece, but you don't need uh, such a big piece. But suppose you will, um, you will be trying to remove, yeah, for trying instance, to whatever, some of these, perhaps. Well, trying to remove, or for instance, um, this component, mm -hmm. and then this will will heat up. If you, yeah, yeah, we yeah. have a, we ah, have a very that's a nice thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice zoom. <laughs> so we we try to remove this one. Mm -hmm. That means that if we heat this, then also this will go loose for sure, uh, or the microcontroller will will get too mm -hmm. hot or too much heat, yeah. and you can shield it just like that. Mm -hmm. So we can now heat this one and. Then the, uh -huh. the heat will be going into this uh, aluminum yeah. and not in these components. Mm -hmm. That's one. The, so shielding is, is one of the tricks. Um, when it happens uh, that you, uh, for instance, uh, by accident, um, you blow away mm -hmm. one of the components, just place it again on. It will be uh, mm -hmm. just reheated and place it uh, again on. But also you can lower your airspeed. Um, I don't know if you... You can, as you can see here, oh. you see a little ball here, uh -huh. and now these are press knobs, but there are also other types of, uh, uh, but when I do this, you see here C18, mm -hmm. 22, 24, 27, 30, and you see the ball going up. Mm -hmm. So that means there's more air being thrown into this, uh, uh, into this uh, nozzle. Mm. There's more nozzle. So, if you really blow away the the components, mm -hmm. components, then lower your airspeed. Mm -hmm. So be, yeah, be patient, patient, and yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> take your time to do so. So, mm -hmm. lower your airspeed. It also depends on the. How, how big are the components and uh, how much heat do they need? Hmm. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure these, for instance, these really, really small resistors. Oof, these those are, yeah, those are really small yeah. resistors, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, zero. You cannot even <laughs> see them here. And zero, I'm six, sure. zero, yeah. three. Yeah. Hmm. We're pointing them out here. Yeah. So to blow these away is yeah, it's, 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 easy. It's easy. Relatively yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. But if they're uh, uh, they're, if they have stick uh, into the paste, in solder paste, mm -hmm. then they won't get blown away that uh, easy. Mm -hmm. If you turn your uh, airspeed lower, um, the next best uh, thing is um, the nozzle size and shape. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, there are uh, different nozzle sizes, mm -hmm. and these come uh, originally with uh, with the uh, soldering station. station. 
yeah. and these are more for uh, BGAs or for uh, yeah. the QFN package here or the yeah. QFP packages. Uh -huh. For uh, for instance, oh, we have well, I have here the, the nozzles which which we use here. Uh -huh. These are the more more common nozzles that we use here. We use that uh, for, uh, well, for practically everything uh, uh -huh. we do, except when we have a uh, we have a, a component like this. Mm -hmm. Then you have TQFP. to use a square shape. Yeah, we have a square shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, I mean, these things are basically fo like, so to say, focusing the heat on the component itself and not yeah. on the other on the components of the surroundings, right? So yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you can very precisely put the heat there uh, where you just want it and not mm. put the heat all over the place. Yeah. So that's one. That's mm. it, it. Actually, only uh, is. Um, present when you use a hot air gun because mm -hmm. you don't have this problem when you're using the reflow oven so that that will be no issue when you use a reflow oven yeah, yeah, yeah. the air temperature and the and the, or the air flow in into inside the reflow oven mm -hmm. is um, it's very uh, life it's mm -hmm. very uh, clean it's not so uh, it's it's a big size mm -hmm. most of the time yeah so you, you won't get uh, Get components that get blown away. No, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, that. there's no such air flow in the in the oven inside the oven. Well, there is. There is of conve yeah. of convection, yeah. probably. Yes. We yeah. um, mm -hmm. we uh, had some uh, some experiments with ovens because we also have our own uh, uh, reflow oven, and um, there's definitely a, a fan in it mm -hmm. to uh, to get the, the air to be even yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, well, that's one of the of the main problems of the SMD ovens. If you do that at home in an oven, you have only heated or on a small center. Mm -hmm. And if you have a nice, uh, good uh, SMD uh, oven, then you have the same, uh, the same heat everywhere. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very nice. We'll be getting back to that because we have mm -hmm. one question that refers to that. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it comes down to uh, shielding, mm -hmm. lower your airspeed, uh, nozzle nozzles. size. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have, for instance, if you have a smaller nozzle like this one, then of course um, the air is flowing out uh, more rapidly mm -hmm. if you have the same airflow on so the you have machine, to also yeah then use if you lower have pressure if you have this one yes you have to have lower pressure mm -hmm. yeah yeah and just one thing i mean what about because i've seen that people uh, using um, aluminum foil you yeah. know like a really a really homemade solution but they cover some parts for instance if you just want to remove a, a processor uh, you just cut like a square yeah, shaped square hole, shape, yeah, and yeah. then you just put it there. It's a nice trick, but be sure that you uh, that you uh, build some um, some layers of the aluminium aluminium foil. Mm -hmm. So take three or four layers, but not not only one layer because it will well, it will still get hot. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, not enough. So make two or three layers on it, and cut out the the, the shape of the component you mm -hmm. want to uh, remove. So. Make sure you can uh, reach it with the twizzles, because, <laughs> or else you will not be able to do that. But mm -hmm. um, that's it's a it's a trick. It can mm -hmm. be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I hope this uh, answered the, this question of this uh, yeah. attendee, Mr. De Moran. So go. Yep. And oh. next uh, was a question we got that from uh, Mr. Inkhorn. We had um, oh. one of these questions in previous uh, yeah. Because, uh, Q and A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The BGA soldering technique. The BGA soldering technique, as you, as you can see here on this uh, picture, the BGA is, is a ball grid array. That means you will have all the contacts on the, uh, on the, uh, beneath your, mm -hmm. your Be yeah, processor. Like below the component itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah below yeah. the component itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the ball grid, uh, the name says it, um, they are all small balls of um, solder paste mm -hmm. uh, underneath the component. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to solder. And why? Because you cannot see what you're doing. You cannot um, visually inspect mm -hmm. um, the, the shape and the, the, the structure and the texture of the, of the solder paste you're using there when mm -hmm. you're heating there. So that takes a, a very different uh, technique. Mm. Um, what we also must use, or what, what comes in handy, is uh, the shape of nozzle that you see here. Mm -hmm. it's, um, 
you know, it, it, it has to be adapted to the BGA that you're using. It has to be uh, the, the right uh, size when it's too big. Just uh, it flows, uh, the heat flows everywhere, mm -hmm. and not on the component uh, component itself. So that's uh, one of the of the things you have to get on. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I took the liberty of um, getting some pictures. As you can see here, this is the the top side of the of the ball grid uh, com component, mm -hmm. and this is where it has to be soldered. Mm -hmm. So. If you solder this, be sure to apply uh, uh, flux, and then the kind that is um, uh, non um, that you, no no clean flux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because you will have you will be having a problem if you use uh, clean flux to be cleaned afterwards, mm -hmm. because you cannot you can hardly get underneath the component. Exactly. How the heck are you cleaning that yeah. one? I mean that below. You're not going to clean uh, mm -hmm. underneath the component. Mm -hmm. And you see here, this is the the bottom side of the BGA. And you yeah. see, you can see here all the different uh, the balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Balls of solder paste. Mm -hmm. That means you you will be heating it from the top side, mm -hmm. and um, to, in order to to flow the bottom side. Mm -hmm. And mm. that's why the the crunch is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now there is, um, for instance, do you have a, a Xbox? Yeah, I, well, it wasn't an Xbox, but it was uh, PlayStation 3, you know. But I know the Xbox, this famous, um, you know, problem with the red light yeah, that is yeah. uh, that with, happened with some games that they are literally burning your console, <laughs> the yeah. graphics pr uh, processor. Well, if you have uh, these problems with an Xbox, it's uh, freezing or uh, it gets uh, the red light or yeah. uh, it's not uh, doing uh, the things that you. Uh, that, the, that it's supposed to do as a game, <laughs> <laughs> then you probably, it can be different because, but you probably will have a problem in this uh, BGA. Mm -hmm. And there's a large BGA uh, on it. And um, well, if you are trying to, to get that refloat mm -hmm. uh, or put a, a new BGA on it, it yeah. can be done. Mm -hmm. But make sure that uh, if, uh, if you do so, that you have a new BGA. They can be uh, obtained from uh, from eBay. Mm -hmm. You can you can uh, buy it. And if you have a new BGA, then it's no problem. What you have to do then is is uh, really reballing. Yeah, re don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you try the reballing, reballing means that you will uh, you will put the you will take the BGA off uh -huh. and then apply all these dots again manually. Manual, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I have. I'm an expert in soldering. I've done it for for, for more than 40 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, reballing a BGA, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's very difficult. I've tried it and uh, well, I've not succeeded. But uh, mm -hmm. no, reballing is is not an option. Um, but if you are uh, doing so, if you are just putting a new component on it, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you uh, you wipe off or you get you clean all the solder of these pads mm -hmm. because the solder tends to stick on these pads and you only have an uneven surface mm. and uh, then try yeah, I know what you mean then yeah. the, I mean it wouldn't be yeah tomb, it would not be horizontal so yeah, to say tombstoning is is evident yeah. going, going to happen is evident going to happen mm -hmm. so uh, uh, take uh, uh, take the here we have the the, the core mm -hmm. take the the nice uh, wire to uh, wipe all uh, all the, the surface clean, mm -hmm. clean it thoroughly. Uh, maybe apply some uh, some uh, more flux, flux. Uh, some yeah. more flux uh, extra, mm -hmm. and um, clean it very thoroughly. And then take the new BGA, apply uh, flux with a, um, a small uh, uh, small brush on it, mm -hmm. and then place the the BGA very precise. Mm -hmm. Because you will not be uh, able to uh, to adjust it afterwards. So yeah, right. Maybe it's uh, nice to uh, to measure it out so you can put some uh, uh, some uh, something here. Yeah, so ma and make sure it's not displaced. Yeah, right. So the contact. I mean, so you're not short circuit. Yeah. When you have any short circuit. And the more the more uh, balls uh, there are, the more uh, chances there is that w it will be mm -hmm. getting uh, dispersed. Mm -hmm. So and then just apply heat, apply heat underneath. So heat up the PCB, 
a bit, not uh, to 200 degrees or so, but mm -hmm. maybe heat it at home on a, on a, a hot stove or a plate yeah. mm -hmm. to maybe uh, 80 degrees or so. Mm -hmm. So you won't have to put all the the, uh, the, the heat, heat from the from the, from the other the side. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, huh. you then just let it sink in. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, I put this. This can happen. This is a, a, a BGA that is not um, th that has cold solders. Yeah. So, so if you do not if you if you do not heat it from underneath, then this can happen. Mm -hmm. That means that the the ball grids on the on the side uh, are are maybe soldered well, mm -hmm. but on on the inside not mm -hmm. because the heat is yeah is badly coming. distributed. Yeah. So badly yeah. Distributed. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh. So it's it's for the expert. Please, uh, if you have a movie of that uh, that you did it successfully, send it in or send pictures. <laughs> we'll be we'll be eager to show it to our viewers. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Skiana, mm -hmm. and he wants to know um, what's the difference between a hot air rework station and a hot air soldering station. Mm -hmm. Aside from the price, aside from the price. <laughs> That's uh, that will not be only the only problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but besides from the price, what you see here on the picture is um, a BGA rework soldering station. It refers to our mm -hmm. previous question, mm -hmm. and uh, it it's um, it can be placed here. Hmm. So you need uh, not a large placement. Uh, ah. on this one. And that's it. Get a heater or this this is a rework station. It uh -huh. gets heated from the from the bottom side, uh -huh. and there's a heater also on the top side. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, for at-home um, practices, we have some different uh, solutions. As you can see, uh, see here, a rework station. It has, um, it has here the hot air gun. Yeah. Uh, it has here um, desoldering gun, so you can uh, pull off with um, vacuum all mm -hmm. the all the stuff that you that that is on board, mm -hmm. all the all the soldering paste that is on the board. And uh, this is uh, also a solution, as you can see here, it's a 3-in-1 uh, solution. Mm. You have here uh, your hot air gun, you have your normaling, normal soldering iron mm -hmm. for your normal components. Yeah. And this is a very nice uh, tool. It's uh, a tweezers. No, no, if I... No. Uh, you... I don't have it here, but we have mm -hmm. it downstairs in our lab. They are tweezers and what, what it is, it's actually um, a sort of uh, tweezer. Mm -hmm. But they get hot, so it's two soldering yeah, arms. I, th I think that you one. showed you showed them in the former in the previous yeah, Q&A. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So you can solder uh, SMD mm -hmm. components by just uh, picking them up, like uh, in between a tweezer, and taking mm -hmm. them off. And what you see here on this uh, side, these are the soldering uh, uh, that stations. That is the one you got. Well, that's, that's the one one we we've got here. Mm -hmm. The soldering station, and this is a. Uh, well, this has not the, the fine tuning that you can do here. Uh -huh. It's just um, heating uh, heating air, so yeah. you can you can adjust the air, not the airflow. That's it. Mm -hmm. But for at home purposes, it's it's all it's okay. Hmm. Okay, we go to the next uh, question, and it's yeah. from uh, Mr. Colacci. How can it be avoided that plastic uh, cases of sensitive parts like lead melt due to uh, the heat of the air? Mm -hmm. As you can see here, I put in a picture. Yeah, and we, I also have an example of SMD uh, LEDs. Yeah. Hmm. As you can see here, the LEDs are. Uh, this is one of the of the LED clocks that I uh, put in. One of the first. Oh, remember there? Yeah. One of the first, and as you oh. can see here, what, Jaime, what do you notice? Yeah, LEDs? they are. I mean, it's like this. These LEDs are more brown. Than these ones, it's uh, it's a bit like yellow. A, a toasted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. yeah. I, well, in the camera, it's really difficult to see, but this line here, they are like a bit burnt, like toasted, and these ones are actually uh, brighter. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I, it can be it can be seen. I did this PCB in uh, in two uh, rows, oh. um, mm -hmm. and in the first row I put on these. Mm -hmm. And then I had to adjust, uh, I had to lower the temperature mm -hmm. because uh, I noticed that they were getting uh, a bit uh, brownie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, it, it happens, so adjust your, uh, your oven uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, to prevent a meltdown, yeah. uh, lower your temperature 
uh, you can do some uh, some shielding if you have to do it in in, uh, in two steps or uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> please take no notice of your of your component specs. That means uh, some specs are just um, some manufacturer have specs that are uh, different in uh, heating curve than others. So that means you have to always have a compromise between, uh, well, as you see, there's a lot of components on it. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you always have a compromise in the heating curve. Um, that's part of the, of, of the trick doing so. So please take a look at your, your components um, specs. Yeah, on the data sheets. Mm -hmm. On the data sheets, uh, every manufacturer of these uh, LEDs gives a, a data sheet on how, to, how it had to be sold or how the curve should be. Yeah. And compare it with uh, the curves on your other of your other components, so that you can have a, a compromise on on this one. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, if if uh, the maximum temperature for uh, eight seconds is uh, on this one 250 degrees, mm -hmm. then um, well, always adjust it to your your uh, maximum temperature yeah. and uh, your lower um, the time. Mm -hmm. So. And what if you have like different components in the same board and with different yeah. we, curves? We always have different components That's with different curves yeah. on, on the board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, sometimes you can imagine that the um, uh, some 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 uh, things like the hmm. uh, like the, yeah, the coil, cores I mean, and the cores like are, they yeah they, they heat up uh, slowly. Mm -hmm. The others heat up more fast. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, in, in every uh, reflow oven you have you can adjust the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have this curve right, but you have to do some experimenting. Yeah. Just um, take a, uh, an experimenting PCB, uh, put some components on it, and mm -hmm. put it in the oven, hmm. and then see what you have to adjust to get it get it right. Yeah, Don't yeah. put uh, 50 of the uh, PCBs that you want to make. Uh, the oven the first time yeah. and just to see what curves comes out no don't do that <laughs> just try it. make a trial run yeah, yeah. <laughs> so adjust um, take care of your uh, component spec specifications mm -hmm. uh, and adjust your reflow oven temperature not mm -hmm. only the temperature but also the time that it's on its maximum uh, temperature mm -hmm. oh yes we have a question that yeah it's actually important for some people because how do you take care of the soldering, soldering paste. paste? Yeah. Well, um, the soldering paste we use uh, some of this uh, uh, soldering guns. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it it lasts well if you don't apply more than you can uh, work uh, on in one day. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, um, for instance, uh, starting on a on a PCB at eight o'clock, and I work my way through when there's uh, more than 120 or maybe 300 components on it. And I make sure that at four or five o'clock I put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. So what I've done then, this is going to be, because if you um, if you're going to let it stay on the PCB, so apply it and let it stay in the PCB for a few days, it's not going to uh, hmm. going to get better. Mm -hmm. It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. It tends to dry out a bit, mm -hmm. and it's not uh, 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 the flux is getting a bit a bit hard. Like so. thick and. No, so yeah. no yeah. flux and also the paste is more. So don't apply more flux than you can work on in one hour in in one day. More paste, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't apply, apply more, more paste. Yeah. More flux. More more paste. Paste exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can apply the all flux you want. You know. I mean. Uh, yeah, flux is not uh, not such a yeah. problem. <laughs> so nice. Hot yeah. air soldering. How to? How to? Yeah. This is how it's done, and uh, uh, I'll try if we can. Uh, we'll do a live demonstration. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let's uh, put, put this away. Mm -hmm. Where's my board? Here's my board. Okay. Here's my board. So. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think Patrick can in. put this uh, in. The yes. So what we have here is um, is a little PCB, and as you can see here, already yeah, I already put uh, two uh, resistors on it. I'll be working here, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some paste. Yep. Now 
next step. And then I'm going to take uh, one of these resistors. And just put it on. Place it right. I'm going to take my hot air gun. Uh, notice, uh, is it all right, uh, Patrick, like this? Yeah. As you can mm -hmm. see now, the, the paste is uh, slightly yeah, melting. turning, melting. Yeah, oh. that's the first one. This is the second wow. one. Already? Yeah. That's yeah. And that's yeah. the third one. Yeah, it's getting shiny. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's getting mm -hmm. very nice and shiny. Yeah. Okay. Then I put my hot air gun away. And as you can see now, it's finished. So it's it's easy. Mm. Apply solder paste, place your components. Use your hot air gun mm -hmm. and let it cool down. That's easy as ABC. We'll go uh, on to uh, our next question. Can you rec recommend a good kit for a homegrown do-it-yourself toaster or reflow oven? <laughs> um, we, we did uh, we did something like that uh, maybe six seven years ago. Yeah, we've, yeah, yeah. Um, the problem with these kits, with these ovens, is that the heat is not distributed uh, well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would recommend it uh, if you're doing uh, things at home, but it can be done. You well, also is something, you know. It's something, hmm. but you have to build your own uh, controller because uh, just uh, putting uh, the heat on uh, 200 degrees and putting on putting it on uh, 30 minutes mm -hmm. will get your components baked, but also your PCB baked. <laughs> And um, so I wouldn't recommend that, but we have good ovens uh, uh, that we use and uh, we, we also sell them in combination with Euro circuits. So uh, take a look at our site and you can see uh, how, it's, uh, how it's supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. Now uh, we use the Electra uh, EC Reflow Mate. Which is that one you have? It's that one. I have prepared a special... Uh, PCBs? A special... Uh, Special PCBs. Pieces of electronics. Pieces, special pieces of electronics. Yeah. And um, I'm going to show you uh, how it's uh, how it's done. <laughs> now I'm going to explain something uh, about uh, the, uh, the the curves, mm -hmm. and then um, maybe we can uh, go to our uh, yeah, because you 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 got the software of the of the EC yeah oven perfect yeah yeah okay okay so. What we are going to, going to do now, we just close the door. And as you can see here, we have different uh, uh, programs in it. We can just uh, load, um, <coughs> load, load some programs uh, in uh -huh. it. Let free, let free pizza. Let free, we can do let free. Uh, normal curves, mm -hmm. normally a uh, curve uh, ah. looks like. Let's see. This is not the right curve. This is the right curve. Uh -huh. We have uh, what we do. What we can do here is we can adjust it. Uh -huh. So at first we're going to uh, let the oven. Preheat to, uh, for instance, to 100 uh, degrees. Uh -huh. During one minute, less than a minute, right? Well, yeah. it, it depends on uh, on how many watts your oven is. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to let it um, preheat, and then we keep it at that temperature for well one minute. Mm -hmm. And then we go up to maybe well depends on your on mm -hmm. on your specification. Yeah, um, and we go up maybe for. Ah. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, also depends on your uh, on your uh, heating. Mm -hmm. And after that, 
we let it cool down and we can here adjust uh, the time that your uh, uh, oven is get, just opens mm -hmm. and um, well see so you can adjust everything uh, with uh, with these uh, graphics mm -hmm. and then you can upload it into the oven mm. and then it, it does this program mm -hmm. um, so you'll, you'll need to make a curve like this you can also uh, download the curves from our uh, website or from the website of your circuits mm -hmm. but um, it's nice it works very fine we have been using it for a few a few years now it works very fine uh, for now I want to, uh, to to bake a pizza of course and then I have to uh, open another file yeah with a proper curve for pizza with a, with a proper uh, curve uh, for engineered, pizza engineered mini pizzas yeah <laughs> so we are going to use this uh, this file uh, we are going to uh, upload it into the oven huh? just uploading it now mm -hmm. and then we will go on with our business eating not only eating because okay. we have a lot to <laughs> then we press run eating not eating <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> now the oven uh, will get will get started yeah yeah oh. so we can close this screen and uh, yeah keep see because we have some uh, things to discuss i think yeah 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 right mm -hmm. so we can just go ahead and, and yeah. yeah right can we close this uh, screen yeah we can no i can do that here not uh, not uh, the application because it no. no 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 not the application no no no, no that's not the yeah okay we just uh, stop sharing the screen so you, we can get back. Okay, yep. we're back. Yep. We'll get back. Yeah. Okay, for you, uh, for everybody who has been uh, from the beginning to the end, uh, we're gonna give this away. So one of you will be awarded with a, a new, brand new Elector USB 2 serial, which is still unreleased, by the way. This is a, yeah, it's, it's a it's a uh, premiere. Yeah, wow, well, we did we we already showed that like a couple of weeks ago, so we couldn't say it's a premiere, but it's yeah. a, but it's not it's not. But today yet. it's the first that we're going to give away. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, as you can see, it's a very nice project. I've been working myself on it together mm -hmm. with the author of it. Um, it's very nice. It provides you with um, well, if you just plug in your USB here, mm -hmm. and then you you can have uh, three extra USB here, so you can put Hosts, your, uh, of your USB stick or mm -hmm. yeah, in it. Uh, but also there's uh, the possibility here that you have uh, RS um, yeah two three two two, three, two. Uh -huh. um, uh, plus uh, here not RS four two two but RS mm -hmm. RS four eight five five yeah. ports. Mm -hmm. So um, this is. Um, it's a very nice tool and uh, well uh, one or two of the designers in our lab have them on their on their uh, uh, on their lab table so it's uh, very nice to have and it's it's really quick on uh, on doing things mm -hmm. and so actually nowadays that computers don't have you know don't, no i mean no. they don't even have rs2 you know 32 and you no, they don't have even have so if you have this one FDI. just on your table it's, it's very nice to have it mm -hmm. yeah we will be uh, giving it away Mm. And um, well, can we can we have a list of the of the attendees? Okay, hey, now okay, now we are seeing you all, guys. Okay, oh, lots of people here. Okay, lots of people. Some familiar names. So um, just scroll up and down, and uh, I'll I'll pick uh, a name. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's. Close your eyes. Yeah. John Hunt, congratulations to you. Oh. Uh, you will be getting the. <laughs> Uh, you you'll, you'll be getting you'll be this uh, with USB uh, electro USB to serial hub, mm. and then um, uh, yeah. well send us a picture if you have it on your desk and uh, when you're using it uh, with uh, some uh, stuff, what are you putting in? What are you doing with this? Uh, please mm. uh, give us notice and uh, yeah, Jan, we we will send you we will uh, stay in touch with you since uh, we have your your email of course. So I will be sending you an email and you know asking for yeah. the. the the address and stuff so we I, can, I can, can do the giveaway you can do the administration yeah you know <laughs> yeah exactly you you did the fun part I, do, I always do the fun part anyway now I'm gonna do another fun part which is eating your pizza so you should check it's, it out it's, it's almost it's ready, ready but we have another one because uh, we oh. will, we'll, we'll you have more surprises well more surprises hmm. next time 
Oh, true. We have next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah. are we going to do next time? Yeah. Next time we have a live presentation uh, uh, from the Elector booth mm. uh, in Hall A6 at the Electronica Fair in Munich. Mm. And it will be on 12 September. So yeah. we'll be there, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So please, uh, so please, join if, you are, us. if you are attending Electronica Fair in München, yeah. in Deutschland, in Germany, uh, please uh, come to our to our booth. Yeah, it's yeah. It's going to be big. It's not a small booth. Because no, it's going to be big. You yeah. will be. Uh, you can uh, do some soldering there. You will uh, be getting uh, uh, free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, please, if you have interesting project to show us, uh, take them uh, to mm. our booth and show them to us. Uh, mm. If you have something to work on uh, on the um, uh, on the Electro Labs uh, booth or yeah, they, or I mean, take it with you. Come to us. Mm. There will be free coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah, and anything more? Good. Did advice. I forget anything? Uh, you are there. Yes, yeah, we are there, of course. We'll be uh, uh, signing autographs and uh, <laughs> this kind autographs of stuff. And, no, yeah. but, no, but it's true that we will be giving goodie bags to everybody yeah, yeah. who yeah. is attending. So just come and say, hey guys. Uh, yeah, we will be shaking hands and yeah. vi just visit there. Having fun. Uh, uh, there will be um, uh, workshops and uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of nice uh, stuff. So uh, please uh, visit us. Uh, we. We try. We will try to get it on uh, on the focus on uh, oscilloscopes and buying them, mm -hmm. uh, power supplies, and so everything that is, that is nice on your on your workbench. Yeah. So it will be very nice. Mm -hmm. If you have su suggestions for that, or, or if you have suggestions for what are you you using at home, mm -hmm. please um, uh, join our next webinar. Send us the questions and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You will so, see uh, a link. I mean, after this uh, webinar, yeah. there's a, you will see a link in a in a website. So you may you, you can register already. So, because you know, actually, it's, uh, I mean, uh, it's limited. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so you should do that <laughs> if you want to attend. So um, okay, what about my pizza? Huh. Go. It's uh, it's almost ready. Almost I think ready. it's uh, okay. maybe one minute or one so. One minute? Yeah. Yeah. Can we check that? Yeah. Uh, we can check that if uh, Patrick puts it yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. We can check okay. It. We're gonna put the software back and see if you, mm, your pizza is properly engineered. Uh, we need another one minute and a half. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you seem uh, to get uh, hungry. Yeah. We'll be... Uh, so, visit us in, uh, in uh, Q&A in yeah. Munich. In Munich. Uh, we in, also, we speak English, we speak Spanish. Spanish. We speak Deutsch. Deutsch. Auch. Yeah, uh, you speak also Deutsch. It's no uh, problem. Auch Netherlands. <laughs> Auch Netherlands. Auch Netherlands. <laughs> So come on and also we see we see we see français Should we wait? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I have these these nice oven gloves. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, finally. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. It's it's hot. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it's hot. Everybody wants some beer. <laughs> Even our cameraman, so. <laughs> Hi, man, putting it, putting it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm. so yeah. Hey, man, thank you. Don't, yeah, yeah. don't burn your fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And see you, see you next time, seriously. Please see join. See you next time. And we'll have fun again. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>